sir. Thank you for uh, appearing for this interview. Like we have been planning this for a very long time, and we we really very really happy to have you here for this interview. So uh, we have we had a lot of questions in mind to ask you. Like we we heard so much about you, and I did not personally I did not get to learn from you to study in your class. But there are there are so many things that we wanted to ask, and we've cut down a few questions and we finally come up with a list. So uh, let's let's just start with you. Oscar, thank you. Sir. So this is a nice thing that you are trying to do. All the best. Thank, thank you, sir. So one question which everyone who attended your course has is the every every lecture at the beginning of the lecture you start with a namaskar, uh, the, even the morning of the lecture. So there are some things like this, some certain subtle things that is your namaskar and your surprise quiz in the morning. So could you say like what is the thing which is behind all of this? Story behind your namaskar. You have to dramatize it. So, all my life I have tried to see what would keep it interesting, and I lie. So these are one thing that just comes to us mind. Okay, namaskar is however something quite different because I think if you notice when people meet outside our country, they always immediately adopt to the Western culture. But why should we do that within India? One, if we meet in a particular region, in the south or the west or wherever, we will normally ab adopt that culture. But here, of course, the English medium, teaching education, the institution, you should. But greeting each other, and particularly this British system of good morning, good afternoon, good evening, most of you don't even know when to say what. <laughs> Do you know the British insist that when you are meeting for the first time in the day, you must say good morning, even if you are meeting at 4 p.m. Oh, yeah. That is the British custom, but okay. most people don't know this. So they say, good evening, sir. But it is not quite that. So that's why I felt this is a much more neutral thing. Just say namaskar. No and also, so I mean, those. what's the subtle story between, uh, behind your surprise quizzes? I mean, is there anything specific? Oh, just a surprise. <laughs> Because you know what you want to keep people on your on their toes, so that they study. Okay. So if it is announced, then you only you know I'll study only when it's announced. Before that you won't. That's what you do for the midterm. That's what you do for your final exams. Yeah. If I say but now onwards, any time, then at least then you'll be keeping yourself up to date. So uh, sir, you've taught at so many places, like you taught at IIT Kanpur and you taught at Triple IITs and Tirubai Amani Institute. And you've been teaching at SNU also for quite some time now. So, uh, what's what is something different that you find here, like the the good things and the bad things, like when you compare the, all these places? Well, it's a new campus, of course, is a full fledged campus. The only other place I've seen this is IIT Kanpur. Other than the, the other institutions, didn't have this kind of full fledged campus, like all that freedom playing games and so forth, mm -hmm. particularly your indoor stadium, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. But I must say in the same breath that the utilization doesn't seem to be of that level. Mm -hmm. Because at IIT Kanpur in the olden days when we didn't have facilities, they were, you know, fight for using whatever facilities they had. That also went down with time because in the present day you have so many other distractions, <laughs> probably games and stuff normal cultural activities do not hold so much attraction. So your facilities are very good but unrealized. Another major difference I have noticed of course is that being an institution where you have a mixture of professionals and liberal arts and science and all kinds, your culture is somewhat different. I have never been in an institution like this. Because IIT is predominantly engineering, triple IITs are also so, other institutions where I've been are also. So this is the first time I've been in an environment which is not always necessarily present, but it is different. So, and one more thing, uh, we are all our students at one point of time and we, whilst we are students, we do tend to commit mistakes because we learn from them eventually. But when we see you as a professor, we, we see you as like, we refer, many of us refer you as like a perfect man because, 
I mean, I'm not, I'm not kidding, sir. Many of them, we refer, we take the, the ideals from you as, oh, for, as a perfect man. And always we had this certain question that, how was Bishwa sir when he was a student? Was he mischievous? Was he, uh, was he very sincere? Some of my fellow mates also had this question. <laughs> See, my grandson, who is nine years old, has similar impressions and asks similar questions. <laughs> so, my answer to him would be, not necessarily what I would have given you independently, okay. but it is the following, that nobody can be infallible, every person makes a mistake, but there are individuals who have to at least put up a front where it should not appear to be a dishonest person. Okay. If I am trying to teach, then I should not behave in a way which is not the way I will teach you. If I am telling you to be honest, how can I be dishonest? I'll be caught if I'm dishonest. So this you know, transmits to all of these. When you say, you know, were you not mischievous? As a student, certainly yes. But today, I understand that if I exhibit those features, the student might take it in a different direction. Say, he does it, so I can also do it. So teachers, uh, even actors to some extent, people who are sort of idolized a little bit, Teachers are no comparison with actors, <laughs> but they have to behave in a better way. And actors cannot, because they play with emotions. Mm -hmm. Teachers don't play with emotion, they play with knowledge. And knowledge is much more rational. It's much easier for us to behave close to an ideal manner. Yeah. That's what I feel. But I think honesty, being upfront, these are pro properties which are not necessarily everybody's. But mm -hmm. I felt that this is how it, I should be, and I tried to do it that way. Particularly because I was maybe born in an environment like that. My father was a freedom fighter. Mm -hmm. and so I saw him also as a very upright and honest man. He will not tell a lie. Sir, was there, uh, like, was there any time, any, any small incident that you remember where you were, uh, where you were doing something mischievous, something that is, like something that you would not like one of your students to do? Even as a kid, as a high school student, as a college student, yeah. any time? Against my teachers, no. I don't ever remember having done like that. Anything. Which people do, right? For example, my head is towards the blackboard and you throw a missile on my back. <laughs> no. I've not done that. Uh, against fellow students, certainly, yes. For example, I still remember one thing and a little bit of remorse for it. There was one student in our class, class friend, very good student, but it's a little weaker on the knees. He could not run very well and so on. So I used to catch him and run with him. And once it did fall down, then I felt very sad, sorry about it. He hit his head and I felt, oh no, no, I shouldn't do that. Then I stopped doing that. So things like that do happen. But other mischiefs, well, as I said, I, I was born, brought up in Calcutta, where mischiefs are generally all politically oriented. <laughs> and I've done that kind of mischief. I've gone in a, you know, procession with slogans and chanda and everything. Yeah, if you call that a mischief. What is that about, sir? Anything. No, the procession and... Yeah. Anything. I said, anything that happens anywhere, somebody comes in with an idea that, well, this is bad. Hmm. Yes. Don't you think we should protest about it? Everybody says, yes. They come out and protest, okay. and the class is gone. <laughs> <laughs> so that is also a mischief of kind, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, so all of us are confused as to what we want to do in future. So, did you always want to be a teacher, or did you have any other career goals in uh, when you were teaching? Young? Was the last profession I had in mind. Okay. I was sure until I went to the United States for doing my PhD that I will never be a teacher. Because some of the profession did not appear to be sufficiently attractive to me. For whatever reason, I do not know. Maybe it was too, you know, humdrum kind of thing it appeared to me. It didn't have glamour or whatever. <laughs> but then when I went to the United States, I saw the other side of teaching some very, very brilliant stalwarts were teaching us and I also was a teaching assistant to them. And the zeal, enthusiasm, tremendous amount of you know, excitement they brought, change. I decided that this is the only profession I take. So that's how it happened. 
I never wanted to be. So and I even my going to United States was not for learning or doing a PhD necessarily. Okay. I want to see another country. Oh. And the cheapest way of doing this is to go and study there. <laughs> <laughs> Any other thing, I'll spend money. And I was from a relatively poor family. I had to support myself completely. Mm, okay. So I decided to take an admission. And even that admission, I did not get any assistance or anything to start with. I took a risk. I had just enough money to go there. I had no money to come back. Oh. I told a friend, please set aside 5,000 rupees. That's all it needed in those days. Mm. So that if I really am in trouble, you will give me the money for, to buy my ticket. He kept it. I didn't need it. So did you at any point of time didn't feel that it is, I mean, you, as you to, as you mentioned, it's a risk that you are going there and, and you ask your friend to meet him. At any point of time, didn't you feel like kind of scared that, okay, what would happen if I don't? I mean, at some point of time. No, it's interesting that I never feel such things. Okay. I never feel nervous. See, I played games all my life up to a certain point of time. Yeah. I think up to 60 years of age. And oh. nervousness that comes, I never felt. So if I have to do something, I'll do it. I'll very quickly decide which way to go. Once I've decided, I'll do it. So I remember when I was going to the United States, I didn't tell anybody that I was going. Okay. My parents, of course, knew. But my friends did not know until about 15 days before. So, how did you meet Mam, sir? Well, ours is a perfectly well-arranged marriage. Okay. So, I don't know, I think both sides advertised. In those days there was news for advertisement, right? There was no shadi.com. <laughs> so, we advertised. We, the elders decide that we should meet. We met. And I asked her, what do you like to do? And she, of course, didn't say she wanted to study. <laughs> she had just finished her graduation. She is an engineer also. Yeah. She just finished it. And I had just come back after doing my PhD. So I said, you know, you have to decide what you do when you go to Kanpur because if you are get married right with me, I live in IIT Kanpur. I said, I'll find out. Yeah. So you got married. Sir, is there something, like some some small thing that uh, you think ma'am doesn't like about you? Like some small habit of yours? Small? <laughs> <laughs> Everything. <laughs> that is true. See, people don't know this. At the level of boyfriends and girlfriends, you never understand that. <laughs> because at that time, you are putting forth your best. When you get married and you stay together, it is impossible to show your best all the time. So your dark sides will come to dark light. Sides. <laughs> All the dark sides, <laughs> like snoring and bed. I don't, <laughs> but people do. Yeah. In fact, people got divorced because of snoring. <laughs> oh. I won't mention the name, that one of your top dignitaries here has that habit. Not the habit, that failing, I would say, okay. that, that is... person snores. Mm -hmm. So, there are many dark sides. Like, one of my dark sides, which she very, very much dislikes it, I seem to often forget about her. Huh? Yeah. Like, That's what she thinks. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I don't necessarily forget, but my demeanor tends to tell her that I've forgotten that she exists. Oh. You can check with her. <laughs> <laughs> she <will> suddenly <laughs> that she feels that way. She has felt many times that way. You have traveled many places, sir. I mean, across all, I mean, many places. Like, what was that thing uh, different? in IIT Kanpur, like what did you, what was the thing which you liked in IIT Kanpur? See, IIT Kanpur is a place which grows on you. Okay. The first time you enter, you may not like it, because it's in the middle of nowhere, absolutely flat land. Yeah. Then, the culture there was quite different in those days. In fact, when I walked in there, I thought that I would come to an American campus. I've seen many American campuses by that time. And it truly was like that, that a lot of American professors used to be there, they instill that kind of a culture, that everybody is an equal. Uh, see, Indian universities typically would have a professor, then an assistant professor, then a lecturer, and they go and talk to each other. 
I can't put, in Americans they used to talk, talk, you know, calling everybody by first name, which is bad. But <laughs> they do that. And so the equality was there. For example, I remember still one of my students who did his B.Tech with me, he did his B.Tech project with me, went abroad, did his PhD, came back, joined as a faculty member. He used to smoke every day. So the very second day he was hiding his cigarette, I pulled his hand and said, look, now you're a colleague of mine. I would appreciate if you don't smoke, that's good for you. But if you do, don't have to hide it. So this is the culture we had, you know. Nobody is unequal. Even now I meet some of my old friends, or even very young ones, that freedom and ability to fight and remain friends. That is what distinguished us. We had tremendous fights among the faculty. But at the end of the day, the mutual <coughs> respect restores your faith and restores your friendship. Mutual respect, mutual faith. <laughs>